Hello friends, welcome back to another episode on our CAPM learning series. In this episode, I'll create a very basic CAPM application and I'll integrate the PostgreSQL, which is a powerful and open source database with this backend API. Nowadays, this kind of a model is also customer is preferring, but the front end they want a ReactJS or maybe Angular, but not UI5. The backend API is supported by CAPM framework. It can be either Node.js or Java flavor. At the backend database, not HANA, but something else, let's say PostgreSQL, which is open source. Now to achieve this, uh, let's see what are the things that we need to perform. We'll be starting with a very basic CAP application and we'll be adding certain roles and authorization. And to test this, I don't need to deploy this into our application to BTP or maybe access to immediately, but we can create certain local test users and we can perform the testing. And then we'll also add local PostgreSQL database, which will be running under a Docker container and will be performing, performing the end-to-end -end testing through local PostgreSQL database. Once it is done, we'll prepare for the deployment to BTP and we'll test from the Postman as a client because we'll not be creating any front-end uh, application in this video. And once this testing is done, we'll try to create certain records over there and we'll see uh, how to access the BTP database from locally. For that, we'll be enabling the SSH and we'll be creating a secure tunnel for that. And from the local system, we'll try to access the BTP created PostgreSQL instance. And this end-to-end -end process will perform in this video, of course. So stay tuned till the end. I hope uh, you'll be also enjoying it because a lot of different uh, important steps and learning there in this video. So without further ado, let's head over to the VS Code. So before we start, I want to mention that I created one repository and uh, this repository has uh, different branches and each branch definitely I'll, uh, will be performing certain things. And I started uh, maintaining the different steps that you need to follow in each uh, branches. And when this is the seventh branch or final branch is over, uh, we'll be basically done with this step 19, okay? And that way, the end-to-end -end flow uh, will be achieved. So as you can see, it's an empty project. So let's clone this one. And uh, I'll clone basically copy. All right. So once it is cloned, let's see the content. Actually, it doesn't have any details. So you can check the git branch currently it is showing okay i need to go to cap pg and then git branch it's currently in the branch main so if i just run git branch um, minus a then it will show all the remote branches okay so what i'll do i'll create a local branch so git checkout and then start with let's say zero one so now it's created the cap uh, app application and you see the different content so to start with just check the readme if you check this readme so these are the four steps that uh, you need to do to achieve this content so to create the capm project as you know i just use the cds init command to create this uh, cap uh, pg cap app application and then i you know created a schema under the db folder and which contains the student entity with certain different uh, properties or fields and I have used the enum type to just, you know, put certain uh, constants with the different stream for the student. My namespace of this uh, entity will belong to this cap app PG. All right. So this is the one thing. And then I created one uh, CSV file as a mock data to start with. So this is the namespace hyphen the entity that is the naming uh, convention. And you see the data over here. All right. The only one record. And uh, then I exposed this in the service uh, folder under service.cds. And this is what I just, you know, get the schema and I put this service name as student service and expose this to, uh, entity. And also added one annotation just to enable the drafting capabilities, right? So that's all I have done in this particular uh, branch. So now to start with, we can go to the application, which is CD app right and then we can just run cds watch a cds watch is a kind of a, a command which will uh, automatically uh, mock this uh, data there is another command called cds run that will not mock okay if we just run this you'll see this only showing this data 
uh, it is already en enabled so if i just click on that you see the data is empty no database connection okay so for that we have to do one thing we can just close it we can do cds watch okay and now you see uh, it is actually serving this uh, mock data so if i just run again and now we have this data all right so now let's go to the another branch let's let this uh, keep running and in another branch what i can do now we'll be currently in branch 01 so let's go to the next step git checkout there is another command called git switch that is also uh, that will also work but let's do git zero two. okay i think i have already cap root so cd cap pg then cap app okay git uh, checkout zero two add role so what i'm planning now i'll be adding a certain uh, authorization right so that uh, by general it will not be available to the to the user and will not be able to see any data it will basically uh, create a trouble saying like some unauthorized so let's do that so now what we'll see go to the readme and uh, you will see a few more steps now and that is like uh, certain you know add user authorization to service.cds so if you open the service.cds now you can see i have added this restriction so i'm creating two kind of a user so two kind of a role like one is a student viewer and they can just only read the data whereas the student admin will have a much more uh, provisions or privilege and they will create uh, they can de edit delete update also the records with a student admin as a, a role okay so now what will happen if i just check the other uh, terminal it will actually it has automatically restarted so if i go there it is showing but if i click on student it is showing forbidden okay it is no more working all right so what we can do but previously it, it was showing the data okay now it is no more showing so if i now copy this and maybe we can open a new terminal or incognito window and if i paste it it will now ask for the username and password so now in general uh, to test this application now we need to add some app router we need to add a excessive author authentication and authorization service we have to deploy it to btp a lot of things we have to do but uh, to avoid that kind of a uh, you know journey i just want to make it little more easier things i'll be creating two local users okay so that i don't need to deploy anything but still i'll be able to test it okay so let's see how to create that user for that i'll switch to the different branch called 03 so let's do that git checkout 03 is what is called add local user so if i do that let's go to the readme again and we'll see a few more so add local test user under dot cds uh, rc.json same thing i can also could add in package.json but i'm just doing it in a cds rc so here i have added uh, as a development uh, profile and i just you know use the passport and strategy as the mock and i created two user one is a student viewer and other is a student admin and i have added certain you know password uh, to test and i uh, and also i have given or as allocate certain roles to perform the action so what you can do we can copy one of the user let's say student uh, admin because it will have more privilege just over here so now let's put the user once again user is admin and password is one two three four five voila you see now we are able to see the data so that is how the, we have achieved the local testing with creating a two local users all right so now we have created the backend service almost ready and uh, we created a local user to test the service so next is now we'll be creating the backend postgresql database right we'll uh, instantiate that and we'll be you know deploying this um, this particular schema to that database so for that let's go to the uh, next branch and we are on 03 so let's go for 04 and now you will see a couple of things first always go to read me to see like what we are doing a uh, lot of steps now i have written uh, the first thing is we'll be adding one file that is called docker compose.yml so this is actually uh, this is the file name that i created this will actually create a uh, docker image it will download the docker image and then after we will run this command called docker compose up 
and that will actually instantiate the container. It will create a container and, and by that way, the PostgreSQL database will be up and running from a Docker site. Now to make sure that we are uh, already having our Docker desktop installed and it's up and running. So this is my Docker desktop and it's currently, I'm just, you know, uh, this application is open in my system. So let's do one thing. We can now run the command called Docker compose. Uh, I think we are in uh, cap app, right? But we have to do a little, we have to just move out of CD. If I put ls, then we have this docker compose yml. So run now docker compose and then up. what will happen? It will download uh, the image. Okay. So it will take some time uh, to download. It will be around 50 MB plus. So I'm just pausing this video till then. So it looks like these two uh, you know images. One is that postgres, another is the adminer. These two actually downloaded because you can see this file uh, docker compose we have two content one is this uh, postgres another is the adminer right so now also uh, the container is up and running you can see the container is already going on okay so now what you can do let's go back to our project and let's see what next you have to do so now to now to test this uh, you can see there are two ports i have uh, exposed one is 800 that is for you know uh, accessing this uh, backend uh, client for the DB database service and this port will be used to deploy the content to the backend database okay so to different ports as the container is up and running so we can open that uh, pull you know the path and it is listening to sorry localhost uh, 8080 is the port and you see this is now up and running so get that to postgresql uh, username is postgres so here you can see the username is will be postgres and the password will be postgres as well okay copy this put it over here as well here and just go for login and now see it is actually created i'm able to access and the default database is postgres so let's create one more database uh, because there will be going to you know uh, deploy the code you can follow along this uh, readme uh, while you are doing this so okay so we are able to access this one and we have to create a database called student so let's copy that go to chrome once again and click on create database and click on save so that way the database uh, you know student gets created right so now we don't have any table it's basically kind of a schema you can think of okay student schema and under which the tables will be created all right so next is we need uh, one uh, dependency and this is what the features will be adding and okay i think it's up and running you can i can create one more uh, thing and you can add cds add postgres so what happened like uh, initially uh, sap didn't support that postgres sql uh, as a default uh, database connection so there is certain community built uh, plugin was created but now SAP has recently you know, launched the service. Okay, so that is called Cap JS Postgres. So that is the service will be now added. So we'll be using this latest one, not that community build plugin. So now, okay, sorry. So I have to go to that Cap CD Cap PG Cap app because there I'm going to add this feature. Um, okay, so what will happen? Go to package.json. Uh, it will be it will be added because I'm, I have already cloned it. So that's the reason this dependency is already added. So you can just run it once again. And this feature will be added successfully. There is no difference as you can see. That's okay because I have cloned the project. So on the switch to the branch, that's why it is uh, not showing. But what you can do, you have to just install npm install this dependency so that this particular dependencies can be you know, available. So let's uh, relaunch this application and also you can see uh, the after installation is done. Uh, once the installation is complete, then uh, what we have to do, we have to just add the local database information in package.json or maybe cdsource.json. So I have added over here only. And uh, what I'm doing, I'm just telling this is a database type, just like kind should be maybe SQLite or HANA, HTTP, so similar ways of Postgres. This is the service uh, that I'm using, which is SAP provided and uh, yeah this is the port that i'll be using for the deployment of the content 
the user password and the database which is created right so the student so that is what i'm giving so now if i just run cds watch and uh, what we'll see and now you can see the little change you can see this connection now goes via this postgres and this is the port is now listening to all right so now if i try accessing this one and see what happens it is telling the you know the relation this doesn't exist because we haven't deployed the content so what i can do we can go for one more terminal and you can call it in this uh, readme you can find this uh, command we, we have to run cds deploy okay so let's do that cds deploy oh i have to do one more thing cd cap and and now cds deploy what happens if everything fine it basically deployed to this localhost 5432 all right so let's open that one and go for student once again i think database level we have student if i select it now you see all the databases got created so we have used the uh, the csv file so we'll be able to see something in the student level so this is the structure so click on select data and this is the one record that i'm able to see that nice so if i create any new data we you know like we have basically added or enabled the uh, the drafting capabilities so if i create a new data then it will not be coming to this uh, table but it will be uh, available under students dot underscore drafts so that you can test uh, quickly maybe from the uh, from the postman so let's copy this url go to postman and uh, if i just you know go for get i'm seeing unauthorized because i have to use an authorization i can put the basic authorization now to access it um it basically saying unauthorized now to test it so we can do one thing we can go to this one and go to we have added two users right so this is one of the user let's say student admin is my is the user and the password is one two three four five and if i just run send voila i'm able to get the data so let's copy this enter details okay and let's create a new record put it as a raw put it a json and paste it now what i can do i just uh, don't want to give id because that will be auto generated and these are the things i don't want i just want to create a new record with a student and this all i don't need it so let the student id this time is 2 and let's say it's somnath uh, only only this first time and last time i'm just setting it up i think beautify is this is the payload if i click on send but this time i have to give the post is the http hub if i click on send 201 successfully created all right so now if i go to the back end postgresql and if i go back to the students and select data i don't see this new record as i said it will be by default created uh, to the draft table so let's go back once again click on the drafts select data voila you see the new record which i just added right so that is available in the draft so by now we are done with this all till exploring the local postgresql on docker and now we are ready for preparation to deploy to cloud so this is my base code so let's get the next branch called git uh, checkout and what is the current branch 04 so let's go for 05 okay so certain commits i had to take care of one second git uh, branch 04 so let's get uh, status yeah something i need to get add i can do git commit minus am probably uh, changes adjusted because i just you now downloaded the dependency that's a package lock get updated if i just run i think no git commit doesn't work okay git add i think that way so now we can put git commit uh, git status anything pending nothing pending i'll add it so git commit uh, minus m uh, package adjustment and uh, yeah all pushed that's okay and we are 
now ready to go to the next branch um okay i think we have to zero five and now the next branch i have added so let's go to the readme and see where are we we have completed this one cds deploy so now we'll from the step 10 we'll start so what we'll do we'll add certain dependency like we'll add the passport and we'll add the uh, you know access security um, and finally we'll add this access ua because that will eventually create access security.json so let's go to so currently it is all created you see because i'm i'm telling again that i'm cloning the branch and that's why all things are available but um, let's see how we can achieve it again so go to package.json and you can see this dependency is already added okay passport and access security right with an npm add so these two commands already did the job so let's delete this access security and uh, what will happen if i go to um, if i run this command it will take all things all the roles that you have mentioned in the service dot cds and then it will create everything okay so that for that i'll go to see cap and just run this one let's see yeah it's created back to the same thing okay so let's save it and what next so next is like we have to build the app by cds build and uh, when you do a build up what will happen it will create a generate folder okay and uh, that we can do but before that we can we have to just add the mta which is a multi-target application so that we, are, we need to create it so let's run studious build so this piece is little complicated okay again i'm telling so let's run this command called studious build and how it will happen it will create a generate folder let's minimize everything and just run and you see the generate folder got created all right now we'll be adding uh, the multi-target application and that is the command called cds add mta so this particular piece to deploy the to btp is little bit you know tricky so pay more attention now so the command is cds so it's kind of a feature called mta the moment i add an mta what will happen it will create an mta.yml file because it's already added before so let me do one thing let me rename it because certain things uh, I need as a reference. So now what will happen? MTA one I just renamed it. So if I just run again, CDS MTA, add MTA, it will create one more file called MTA.yml. Okay. So what we'll do next? Basically, certain of changes we need to do on the MTA file. And before that, what what the changes we need specifically? Like when it deployed uh, to local PostgreSQL database. We needed one service that you can recall i guess the service name was what one second where is the package the service that uh, sap was using this is the builder okay postgres uh, builder so that particular you know uh, dependency a node module was actually helped to deploy the content to backend local system local postgres sql docker uh, system running from docker right so that is what used it but when you will deploy to the btp what will happen we need it will basically uh, try creating a new instance in btp if it is not there that's a new just like we create a hana database hana instance we create right similar way it will create a new uh, postgresql instance automatically and uh, and if it is there then it will definitely not create but it will bind this application and database to that db so for that we need this deployer again okay and uh, how we can achieve it we need this a pa a pg package.json so this is what i'm saying i need this service again it's kind of i'm creating a new small builder application okay so notice it this is the package.json but i'm just setting it up a pg package.json because it's all dependent uh, responsible for the deploying to btp postgresql instance and then i'm creating one more bash script and it's a normally it's called a shaban shabang and then bin bash to determine this is a bash script then I'm cr i'll create one folder under gen pg db okay so this is a generate 
then it will create one new folder called a PG, which is for PostgreSQL, and under that it will create one more folder called DB. So that the first uh, command it will do. Then what will do? I'll just copy my current, uh, you know, mock data, okay, uh, to the same way. I think the it is incorrect. Uh, so DB data to not service. It will be uh, no. We'll need it just under newly created folder after creating the folder under that we'll just copy this data folder to that with this uh, mock data okay so that when you'll deploy to the btp this mock data will be also loaded this is not recommended but why i'm doing it there's a purpose for that we'll shortly see that so this is just for the demo not a production kind of a thing we're doing we're just in you know, exploring the things so this file will, i'm just copying from this folder from current db folder to that newly created uh, pg folder which is not yet created okay it will be created once this bash script will be executed and after that what i'm doing i'm basically compiling my cds then enter schema will be creating a season file okay under the same db folder which is an equivalent to my schema currently this is the schema so this same schema will be compiled and put it into the as a season file then i'm you know copying this package.json which we just created with a pg as a sub you know, prefix and uh, also the package log.json so this way uh, the uh, the application should be ready but how to call this uh, builder for that in the empty.yml uh, what we have to do we have to add one more command okay this command is called bash this is yml file make sure you maintain the tabs and all so bash then it's a pg sorry dot pg build dot sh right so this is the file so what will happen first it will create a production build and immediately it will try to create the deployer cds deployer if you're on mac then you don't need to run this uh, put this command you can simply put like that okay it will work but for me i'm running from windows so i need to use this and also a couple of other things i need to do the the one of the important thing is you will see that a service plan is actually development it should be trial okay not trail sorry it should be trial and a couple of more things i have to do and that is over here in this postgre de uh, deployer we need certain memory and all so this everything um I have mentioned over here as you can see in the mta1.yml I have mentioned this one I have already added the bash uh, commands and also added a supported you know different disk quotas and etc uh, for the successful deployment so what I'll do I'll basically don't need this one don't save it and mta.yml I basically I'll delete it and I'll rename this one without oh, sorry not this one uh, without one okay that's all so that way uh, this MTA will be will be ready for the deployment so what next let's do one thing we have uh, to deploy it uh, to BTP we need to create one mtar file multi target archive file and for that we need to run mbt so mbt is a tool that you need to install if you are using vs code but if you are you are using a business application studio uh, then definitely those things will be auto uh, available it will be available there and you don't need to install anything but uh, my preference is vs code so that's what i'm doing so the moment i'll run mbt build what will happen it will start you know getting that uh, it will start preparing the make file I'm taking a pause over here. All right, so that uh, MBT build ran successfully and it created the empty archive folder and you can see this empty file over there. So now the next thing is we need to deploy this to BTP. And before that, I'm on to show my BTP over here. If you go to the instance and subscriptions, uh, I already created one instance for the PostgreSQL as you can see so this instance is already created for me 
and currently there is no binding done so the binding will be happen over here okay once it deploy this mtar file to btb now if it is it is not necessarily that you need to create that because if you quickly see the mta once again this is important um at the end you will find called the cap app postgres and it's a managed one okay so means if it is not there in the btp already then it will create it and if it is already there then it will not create but it will bind the new changes to that uh, instance that is how it works we have done this embedded build so now we have to log into this btp and then we can deploy this uh, archive file so to login it is cf login and it will ask for your user and password Oh my bad. It is not CDS deploy. It should be CF uh, deploy. Sorry. Yeah, MTA, and then yeah, because the Cloud Foundry, so CF uh, should be using not the CDS. All right. So it is around 80 MB data that will be deployed to BTP. All right. So the deployment is done successfully, and you can see this particular service is up and running. If I click on that um this is the application router now let's run that now let's click on this entity called student yeah expected it is saying like unauthorized because we are uh we have added the roles right and uh, obviously the current user which is my user id btp user id doesn't have this role so let's do one thing let's go to go to trial and then we'll be going to role collection and uh, we'll be creating one more role okay so let's create a new role and we call it student um, admin let's this is the role or maybe role collection student uh, role collection okay and now we have to attach that roles that we have we have created so if you click on edit let's search for this role look for student you see student admin and student viewer both the roles also deployed so select student admin and the user i need to add the my user id and then i'll just save it so my user is added user uh, does have this role collection and user also have this uh, specific role collection attached as you can see click on that maximize it go to role collection now you can see this student role collection is available and which is having these two roles i mean student admin um, i think another role probably i didn't save it well but anyway the student admin is available so what now we can do uh, if I just test it, will it work? If I refresh it, no, it doesn't work. Why? That because um, we need to, you know, because this particular service URL is worth protected, and to achieve the data or results, we need to pass a token, and that is a JWT token, a JSON web token. And for that, we need uh, to create certain app router, uh, but we haven't done the same so we'll be using postman for that so let's run postman and uh, the same service url i'll be calling now let's go for git but obviously if i send it uh, the same problem unauthorized so i have to attach the authorization now so authorization would be auth 2.0 and we'll be adding certain values over here for that we can go to our trial once again and uh, go to the spaces because there we'll find the application deployed 
clicking div click on this service now click on this environment variable we have one more thing called access ua and we need the credentials from here so the client id should be this one so copy it client id you put it this and then client secret so obviously you will be using yours don't copy mine because i'll be deleting this anyway the so client secret is this one right now this is the btp user id and password and finally get new access token so you'll see this authentication is successful proceed that and you can give a name i have given a name called cap app and use this token all right the token is applied and now i have to make a call awesome you see the data is appearing so now let's do one thing let's create this data again just like we did last time similar way go to body okay let's create a data called somnath from postman and if i just try creating this data what will happen let's see post it successfully posted so not from postman so if i click on get then what will happen should i see so not from postman anywhere i don't see so not from postman right some other garbage data is coming because the same database i'm using earlier in my uh, self exploration so that's why some garbage data is coming but the one called somnath from postman is not appearing because it is actually saved in the uh, draft table the question is how to check whether the data really got created and how to access it so for that we'll be using uh, that connection right that kind of thing called enable ssh we'll be creating a tunnel now and then we'll be accessing this btp postgresql database from the local computer let's do that let's go to the next branch um i think yeah so the last branch is seven now we'll be doing an ssh setup and we'll from step 18 we have to now perform the first thing is we have to enable the ssh and the application so application is here the backend api so let's run cf enable hyphen ssh and the application name you can get it from here uh, the application name is uh, cap app service so this is the application so once you run that it will enable the ssh all right next is we have to restage the app to to make this enabling active okay so for that cf restart the same app okay so this is important don't miss out the second step we have to restart this app otherwise this ssh enabling will not work yeah it's already started so what next next is we have to create a service key for our postgresql instance the thing is the in the dev i think sorry in the instances we have this postgresql postgres as a backend means btp postgresql instance now to work with this instance from other side right so we need a service key to interact with so go there um, we can create a service key from here also you can do from the command line interfacing so the command is cf create service key i think that is csk and then postgresql instance name is what this is the postgresql instance name and then um, what the next command is the uh, the name of the service key we can put anything called srv post case srv underscore key if i perform it will create a new service key now you see this key is created okay for this one and you can find the same key name as now we just you know mentioned in the cli okay that's interesting and now to get this details like whatever we created we can again go to that and click on view so that we can display all the points also we can run the same command 
all creates uh, cloud foundry service key and details then you will get the all the details and the command uh, console also okay in the terminal but anyway we can see it from here so next is like we need to create and secure ssh tunnel i mean to say we told this one so this enabling part is done and to access it we will need to need to create an ssh tunnel for this so for that the syntax is our command basically we have to run uh, this one so cf ssh capital l and then the port is 63306 is my port and now we'll be mentioning the postgre instance host name and postgre instance port name over there so the details you can find host name is here copying it and then colon then port name is 4180 all right and finally the app name the app name is cap is app srv so this is the app name and now if i run it what will happen is everything fine Yeah, we'll see this kind of a new command prompt. It's actually now interacting directly from local to VCAP service, which is a cloud BTP. So now from here, we can able to access the BTP PostgreSQL instance uh, with a secure tunnel. Okay, so that's the new prompt we are able to see. All right, so what next? Next is um, you need to install a PostgreSQL client or CLI client for that. So you can perform this Choco install Postgres 14. This is the latest version. So I already installed this one and uh, I only installed the client part, not the server part because I the server is already in BTP. So I just installed the client part, okay? The CLI part rather. And I have uh, updated my environment variable so that from anywhere I can access the PSQL command because this is the command I need to perform. It will be available if you only update the environment variable. I'm using Windows, hence I have done that way. All right, so I can run a command, um, command prompt probably. And I can run this command PSQL. You can just write it and you'll see if everything is fine. It will probably give some error connection. So it is trying to connect the backend for me. My, but my docker desktop is not running at this moment it is not able to connect but it is the command is actually directed but we'll be trying to connect to the front end from, uh, sorry you are trying to connect over here to the btp layer not the back end docker okay or, or the local docker system so for that minus d and then the database name uh, that we have to give so the database name will find it over here sorry mm you so the database name you will find where this is the database name okay sorry where is that database name and next uh, will be the username make sure the username should be capital u not small u okay it's a capital letter username also you'll find it over here the username is this one what next finally um, we have to put the port because this is the port we just in exposed the same port we have to listen to minus p 63306 and finally we have to say the host is localhost because we are accessing the btp postgresql instance from local so once you do that it will ask for a password okay so this is the specific user and we need to give the password the password is here where is the password password is here copy this and it will not be visible so paste it and then enter if everything fine then voila you see you are started accessing this database from local okay so this is this database actually accessing is available in the btp uh, postgresql instance but uh, now couple of interesting commands will be performing so let's do that uh, so we are successfully linked to that is good point 
now certain commands will see that what are the things that available so this command which is select all the database available right so let's see what are the other database available make sure every syntax would be ending with a semicolon if i run that you will see other than this database you have these are the following you know schemas are available following database uh, are all available so this is the uh, command for that so now if you want to switch to any other database right so currently you are in this database as you can see right but if you want to switch to other database this is a command called uh, mine uh, backslash c and the database let's say postgres okay and if i run that you are now connected to postgres beautiful right back to again uh, it's a big database name let's copy it i don't know if i run i'll again back to this database all right so now let's see what are the tables so this is the schema you can think of just like a student so this is the schema created in btp automatically so obviously we'll be finding different tables that gets created during deployment so what are the tables so the tables to get this is the command will run and we'll see this is the tables got created right so this is the draft table and this is the this is the actual table this is the corresponding draft table okay now um, let's see to see the data right just now we created one in uh, one record from postman which is somnath from postman that, that was the name first name right so this is the data we created so let's see whether this data is available in the draft or not so for that what we'll do we'll run this command select star from this database ending with semicolon and you see something we created somnath from postman where is that yeah you see somnath from postman so this is actually <coughs> residing still in the in the in the drop database not the actual database okay because actual database is here if you just select this record and select star from this and you see this is the data which is available right but not uh, the one which is showing all right so i think uh, it's a good uh, exploration so far and we are all ending now by this level and we completed all the steps i hope you learned something new and interesting and i definitely will recommend to try it out if you are still watching this video i hope you enjoyed this so don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe my channel because that's a motivation that works for me to create this kind of more content for you as a free see you again thanks for watching